<laughs> the minute I go live, I love it. Sorry, Ian, I'll have to talk to you later. Welcome, it's Jeff from Home Renovation DIY. That's a shame. That was an important call. But that's all right, because nothing's more important than you. And here we are talking to you guys tonight. I've got the control room up. I have got my chat open. Here we go. It's a bit of a last minute impromptu live video tonight. I've got some awesome news to share. Hey, Danny. Welcome to the chat, buddy. Um, first of all, let's just get some channel business out of the way. It's Christmas time. Joshua Dima Xavier. <laughs> DeWalter Die. I love it. Uh, yeah. Santa Jeff. Yeah, I just went out and bought this thing. Where's my... I got my tag on it and everything. It's a little tight. I got a big head, so I might have to take this back, get my three bucks. <laughs> Donald is in the chat tonight. So is Chris. Loving the hat. Nah, well, you know. It's this time of year, you know, in another another week or so, I'm not going to be able to make any more videos because I've got to go deliver all the presents. Anyway, um, I'm here tonight because we've got some channel business to catch up on. We've been doing a lot of work in the in the background. Um, you know, the channel's getting to that size now where we, we start, our, start getting more and more opportunities to do things to help you guys out. So we're kind of jumping in with both feet. And to be honest with you, it's a little overwhelming back at the office, but... I got a Christmas present I wanted to share. Ah! Bum, bum, bum. Merry Christmas from Crescent Tools. For some of you who remember, Crescent Tools, uh, we did a video with them for Father's Day this last year. Where they, you know, interviewed my son Matthew and I. And that was really kind of fun. It's always interesting to see what your kids are going to say to you when they're interviewed. Anyway, Crescent, you know Crescent, the Crescent Wrench, right? These people. Well, they're a huge company, turns out. They represent like a dozen brands or something. They got some amazing tools. They sent me some free stuff here. Check this out. 25 foot Lufkin shock force tape. That's very cool. That's nice. The numbers are nice and big because, you know, I'm getting old. I've had too many lasers hit the eye. It's making it harder and harder to read. Oh, my mic is too low. Max is telling me. How's the sound now, Max? Yeah? Yeah, I'm getting the thumbs up. And we got this new one here. Boom. This is awesome, right? You've got to love the green O on the black. And it has a really awesome stand up too. It's 14 feet. So that means that I can stand here and scratch Max's head for him. <laughs> uh, what else have we got in here? Let me see. Catalogs, products. Oh, and I threw in my favorite new tool from Crescent. For those of you who haven't seen this before, this is a uh, wire stripper bum, bum, and switchblade into a square end plier. So when you're doing your electrical work and you're wiring your boxes and your switches and your plugs, it's one tool, like all right there. How handy is that? All right. Now, what a great little tote too. I needed a new tool bag. I've been running around with my little gym bag from a gym membership. I got a free gym bag. I haven't been to the gym. You might notice. <laughs> anyway, we're going to fill this up tonight because I'm here because I'm talking about something called International Tool. Do, 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 do. These folks have been talking to us lately. Oh boy, I'm going to be in trouble when I do this, Max. When I slide this over, am I going to lose my dashboard? Uh, I don't know. Oh, but nope, that's not going to work. Yep, I'm going to lose my dashboard. Hang on. Kids, we got uh, Just Dad working with technology tonight. God help us all. Bam. Well, that's not so bad. We'll get that to work. There you go. International Tool. Uh, they're an online tool distributor. And the reason I'm highlighting them tonight is because we uh, opened up a new affiliate link with them. And here's the reason why. Uh, you know, Amazon's been great. And for those of you who've been supporting our channel, buying on Amazon through the links, that's been fun. Thank you so much. We appreciate all of the help. Um, this YouTube gig is not a get-rich-quick scheme, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, but the International Tool is an online tool supplier. I uh, just want to open up another browser, and it's giving me a hard time now. What do I know? I use a hammer. Like, seriously? And now this is gone. Okay. 
I, yeah, that's not going to work. I can't do both at the same time. All right, I'm going to get back to this because uh, I'm more interested in the chat than sharing that right now. Let me get back into the chat. International Tool is an online tool supplier, and you saw the website. They have every letter in the alphabet. The idea there is you go to the letter and you click it, and it gives you the list of all the major brands that they carry. And these guys aren't like Amazon where they'll have one saw or one drill driver, but not the one you want. You know, Amazon is frustrating because they don't carry whole product lines. Wow, Max, this is brutal tonight. Just trying to open up a page. I have a page over here. Wow, I got to bring all this back to where I am. Okay, this is really, I, you know, I never did apply to go to NASA for a reason. Holy cow. All right. YouTube. I got to get back in the chat because I don't know what's going on. Anyway, international tool to carry like entire lines of tools, right? And they're huge. So they have discounts and, and reconditioned tools and, and spontaneous sales. So what we did is we set ourselves up as an affiliate with them because it gives you more options, right? You're not locked into a brand or a power type or, ooh, I love that drill, but they don't have the brush list. Uh, is that a good deal? You can comparative shop on this thing all day long till you drop. You can take advantage of every deal that you can see. And so we set this up because we wanted to give you choices, right? Like, let's be honest. Um, having an Amazon link is nice, but it's, it's, not, it's not all the choices in the world. So we want to give you more choices, so we did this. Here I am trying to talk to and use a computer. Man, I want to just bash it up against the wall. Here we go. I'm almost there, Max. Oh, this is painful. I would rather open a concrete floor to run plumbing. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't have a clue what's going on now. Max? Classic Studio. Got it. Am I going to live streaming? Live streaming. Yeah, maybe. Yep. Painful. All right. Okay. I think I'm here. Sorry for the pain, guys. This is... Uh, no Maddie today. No Maddie today. He's the brains in the operation. I'm just the good looking one. All right. Hey, I can see that. There we go. Oh, do you silicone grout gap between tile and countertop? Yeah. Anytime you're tiling, guys, it's an expansion joint because you have different materials. You always have a silicone line. I like to grout first and then add silicone, but that's just me. Um, generally, unless it's like really extreme situations, you don't have to worry about it. All right. And I don't mind answering the odd question tonight, but tonight is really all about sharing with you what International Tools sent me for Christmas. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. Nice. They got some new fine blades from my multi-tool. Yes, I own a multi-tool. <laughs> I even use it on occasion. Um, this is awesome. So we'll throw that in the tool bag. We're going to do a video on multi-tool soon. It's one of those things that's like, it's really nice to have if you're in the trades or if you're a serious tool connoisseur. But in most cases, you can replace it with other tools that take 10 times longer to get something done. They carry Diablo blades, my favorite blade. All right, I'm actually my saw needed a new one. Did I? Oh, I got the 40 tooth. This is my all-purpose just cutting and ripping saw. That's awesome. That's good to see that. Oh, that's the one I wanted. See, I'm about to film a how to build your own custom closet video. Yeah, it's a huge walk-in, and I needed a new saw blade for my saw because it's going to do a lot of work on some melamine. That's awesome. Loving the Diablo Blaze. What else we got here? Oh my goodness. Mm. All right, so some of you have seen my DeWalt saw. It has the, um, the cord's been cut a couple times. <laughs> Happens. And I've spliced it back together a couple times. So I asked these guys, I said, well, you know, if you got one of those new 20 volt circular saws, right? Then send it to me because I would love to try it. I have used uh, cordless tools before. I would never was much of a big fan, to be honest. Like, I always found there just wasn't quite the power. And I, I didn't like the fact that when I was working with all cordless, my batteries would always be dying. And then it'd be at a standstill. I'd be like, well, you know, crap. I just finished doing 
two hours of really difficult work. All the batteries are dead and charging. Now I'm on break. So I got tired of that action because most of the time where I was working, I wasn't on a new construction site where we didn't have power. So power tools never let you down. So I didn't like being let down. But uh, the new generation of 20 volt, apparently the world has changed. We're going to give it a shot. I'll tell you what I think. Oh, yes. Whew. And this is the one that I needed. The pin nailer. Maybe we'll even open this one up. For anybody who doesn't aware, HPT is actually Hitachi. They've uh, done a rebranding and changed their name. Right? I think, uh, I think the Lowe's channel there is uh, promoting the living daylights out of it because they, they sell their tools. But so does International Tool. So if you're like me and you don't like shopping at Lowe's, you don't have to. You can still get the tools that they sell. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. There you go. So this is a 23 gauge pin nailer. All right. Looks really cute. Aw. So inch and three eighths nails. Now, this is going to be just tiny stuff, right? But this is for doing really detailed work. Um, if you're doing like little box work on your walls or you're adding real decorative trim to a door or you're building a custom closet and you have custom shelves for shoes, this is something that's going to come in handy. Anyway, so thanks. Cheers to International Tool for helping us out in our cause to spread the cheer to the world. That is awesome. I am so glad we have that. Now, back to the chat. Uh, Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. I'll be honest with you. Milwaukee is an awesome tool, all right? Um, but it's the equivalent of somebody driving a uh, front-end loader to work on the highway, right? Guaranteed to get you there no matter what the traffic conditions, but not the most efficient thing for communicate for just for getting back and forth to work. Milwaukee to me is like a really expensive tool for guys that are using it to make a living. For the rest of us, it's just really not necessary. Let's take a look at this. Uh, you got to have a rainbow in your toolbox. Well, listen, <laughs> you're making fun of the fact that I've got this and I've got that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not married to any tool, right? Uh, I do really enjoy the DeWalt tools. Obviously, I find it's a nice combination of power and price, right? But the reality is, is on our channel, you know, although we do do some endorsed product stuff, um, I haven't made the move to, to, to agree to endorse just one power tool. I don't think that's really going to be good business for us. I like to be a little more independent and have my own thoughts. It's one of the reasons that people have asked comments on the time, how come you're not on a TV show? I think it's because I'm old and a little fat and not that good looking, but it could just be the fact that my style of work is uh, not to be much of a sellout. And unfortunately, television likes to tell you what to do, when to do it, and that's really not my style. Now, if they ever wanted to let us have a show where we got to do what we wanted to do on it, maybe we'd talk, but whatever. I'm real happy on YouTube. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's just get some questions here. I need a construction Santa hat. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Uh, hello, Jeff's wife. Somebody knows Michelle is monitoring the chat. That's awesome. She's becoming a celebrity. Uh, can you do a giveaway of your old tools? You know, that's it's a good question. I'm in Canada. Um, if I want to send anything... I'd have to give it to Canadians only, or it's going to cost me more money to ship it than it is to buy you a new one. So I really don't know how effective that's going to be. Although I am talking to a couple of different people, maybe International Tool will get on board with our speaking tour. Um, and I know I keep talking about it and I haven't published the dates yet, but it's coming really, 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 really soon. I just have to get my daughter's job done. And then I can have five minutes to breathe and I'll get those dates out soon. Uh, I look better than the guys from this old house. <laughs> I almost said it, Max. <laughs> okay, joke's out. I'm going to let it out. People ask me about this old house. And, and we have a joke, uh, my son and I, and I call it this old host. Uh, no disrespect to the guys. They're craftsmen and I love them. But uh, yeah, maybe time to hang up the tool belt. Uh, I'm the only reason I look any better than them is that I can still bend over. That's about it. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Wow. What about rigid tools? Yeah, I wasn't a fan. Frank, I tried them out. I went out and spent my own money and I bought the rigid power tools, you know, the drill and the impact. I used them a few times. I did it in a couple of videos. I was just like, there's just something missing there for me. And you know what? The price point between rigid and DeWalt was so small. I say, cook a chicken soup, don't buy pizza, and the money you save, now you can afford a DeWalt, right? Like it's just, it was so close. It just wasn't worth the investment to be disappointed. You know, like for 30 bucks, I don't want to be 30% disappointed. It just didn't make any sense for me. I was really hoping that the new brushless were going to blow my socks, but nope. I think the DeWalt um, traditional drill without the brushless technology was still better than the rigid with the brushless. And there's a reason for that. But uh, da, 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 da. What are your thoughts on vintage tools? Uh, first of all, the old Craftsman tools are awesome. My favorite drill ever was the old Craftsman pistol grip drill from like 85, 86. That thing was awesome. Had a cord, but that was my favorite drill ever. If they could have made that into a cordless tool, it would have been amazing. Uh, would I be completely stupid to wait to install trim until after my carpet is laid down? Hmm. To a certain degree, yeah, because if you install your trim first, then you can do the caulking and finish all of the paintwork to its entirety before the carpet goes in. Now, granted, you're going to have maybe a couple touch-ups, but uh, putting the trim down after means then you're going to do the caulk. Then you got to do the cut line on the wall and the trim, unless you're just going to cheat and not paint after you put the trim. That's up to you. Um, a lot of people like Festool. Who doesn't? Hey, right? I like Lamborghinis. <laughs> like, let's be real. Festool? Seriously? What do you got to charge $500 an hour to afford those tools? Let's get real, folks. Let's leave Festool for the one percenters, all right? And television show hosts. Uh, yeah, they're probably amazing. But at the end of the day, I don't work for people who are paying me enough money to buy tools like that. I don't even know if that exists. Can I do an airless sprayer tutorial? Probably not the right guy for it. I, uh, I don't do a lot of spraying. Yeah, I mean, but we could have some fun trying one day. Uh, we are going to do a, um, a textured wall and ceiling application. Where we're going to spray the mud on and then do the traveling afterwards. So that's coming up soon. We're looking forward. Great deal, only 30% disappointment. <laughs> well, if you think so... Uh, it's positive for people who use their tools once or twice a year because of batteries. You know, yeah, the rigid guarantee for life, only if you register your tool. Now, if you do that, great. Uh, but here's the thing. I bought a DeWalt drill. And I still use that drill today. I've had it on my site for four years. I Everything I've built on my YouTube channel, I've used the same drill. And the batteries still charge in less than 30 minutes and still last for hours. So the idea that you buy a cheap tool because the batteries aren't going to die, that's old news. Battery technology is, uh, it's not NICAD anymore. The lithium batteries do not have a performance issue over time. So feel free to invest in them. Um, what do I think about getting cheap tool, tools Harbor Freight? You know, if you can get a cheap deal and you're not investing for tools you're going to use all the time, then I think it's probably a good idea. Uh, anywhere in Ontario to find non-organic subflooring? non-organics so you mean like it, it wasn't never a tree so I didn't even know subflooring could be organic there's so much glue in it boy you got me on that one wow uh, what's the easiest and best way to take down old wallpaper that all depends what it's on if it's on drywall was the wall painted before is it on wallpaper previously is it on plaster can't give you one answer because there's too many different products for too many different situations. Uh, generally, you peel the face off and then you just soak it with a sponge over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again until the brown paper releases. But uh, Bathtub recasting tutorial, please. Recasting. Hmm. How are Ryobi air nail tools? Um, I'll just say this once. 
Um, Ryobi tools do not measure up to any standard at any time period. That's my opinion. Don't waste your money. There, I said it. Porter Cable's decent, though. They used to be a bigger name in the tool department, but somewhere along the way, somebody fell asleep with the marketing and got they got overrun. Da, 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 da. Have I used Cali Bamboo Laminate? No. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm glad my stuff has been helpful. That's cool. Next April Fool's Day, can you do a Bob Ross canvas painting? <laughs> Seriously, you want me to do it? <laughs> that would be... That would be interesting. Um, wow. Wow. Maybe maybe as a live show. So yes or no? Let me know. We could we could run the tutorial and then I could try doing it right there on the spot and see what happens. All right. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Wow, I scrolled too far. Shelly says don't ever charge. Don't overcharge. Not sure what we're talking about. Uh... Jeffrey loves the video channel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why does my light stay on? The switch doesn't work. Only turns off from breaker. You just need a new switch. They're plastic parts connecting metal components. Sometimes they just get broken. Switch that out. Turn off the breaker. Switch it out. This just two screws, a black and a white, and you'll be good to go. I'm sure that will solve your problem. Unless somebody wired up the switch on constant power. <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, ever done a butcher block countertop install? Yeah, no different than laminate. You cut and measure and you screw it down from underneath. Piece of cake. We actually have a laminate countertop installation video coming up sometime, what, Max? End of January, maybe? Yeah, something, something like that? Yeah, third week of January. Have I ever poured my own shower pan? Yeah, I did that actually yesterday morning. And uh, still works great. Still one of the very few um, accepted techniques for doing a bathroom is to pour your own pan. <sighs> okay. Milwaukee all the way. Here we go. Wow. So hard to uh, deal with this. Oh, oh, whoop! Oh. almost lost my mouse again. Uh... Can I do a video on how to properly hang heavy objects from lath and plaster walls? How heavy is your how heavy is your your your, your object? Because to be honest with you, one of the best techniques, like let's say it's a TV, is drill a hole about an inch and a half, two inches wide, stick in a tape measure until you find your stud. All right, in both directions, mark it, and then screw right through the lath and plaster right into the stud. That is the best way to do it. Don't worry about the hole. It's just a hole. You can fill a hole anytime you want. Didn't even take the tag off the hat. Well, I was in a bit of a hurry. You know, besides, I might be able to get my three bucks back. Uh, opinions on heating coils for sidewalks. Yeah, it's a great luxury, but you know what? We're not going to save the planet if we start spending money on luxuries, are we? Hmm. Talk about a conundrum. Oh, wow. Imperial versus metric. Whew. You know what? I don't know. To me, it's all the same. I think the brain is capable of learning any system and being proficient at it. It's all about what you get used to. Really, I don't think it's worth discussing. Uh, is it okay to have the Durofoam insulation on contact with the basement floor? I made a mistake of installing the subfloor first. Why do you need foam insulation on your floor? Dr. D. Omer? I don't know how that is. But honestly, um, I have yet to see anybody produce any documentation of a test that shows that insulating your concrete actually changes the temperature of the airspace directly above it. Feel free. My email is in the video link. Waiting for somebody to tell me it's not just a great way to steal your money. But I haven't seen it work that way yet. What tool do I use to demolish external brick and keep studs and solid wood sheathing? Ha, yeah. 
you want to get a, uh, a demolition hammer, all right? Um, it's an SDS tool. So it's, uh, it's like a, a, a long hammer bit, so it has impact hammering, all right? So when you press, the hammer action is engaged, and as soon as you release, and you can remove brick and fireplaces and everything else in minutes with that tool. You can rent it, probably 30, 40 bucks for a day at the, the Home Depot there. Uh, how to improperly install stairs? Not yet. Interesting. Max, I tell you, there's never going to be any time we run out of things to film. Here's the only problem. We actually try to film on projects that we're actually doing because the cost of producing videos without a project is just, it'd be crazy. We're not at a point where we can just go buy materials, go into the studio, build something and then throw it in the garbage. That just doesn't make any sense. So <laughs> maybe, maybe someday, but that almost seems offensive to not build it for somebody. Uh, is mineral wool made of asbestos? No, it's not. It's made of stone. It's like spun rock. All right. Don't worry about it. Mineral wool is not an asbestos product if it's on a shelf today. How much do I charge an hour? I don't. I don't do work for anybody else except close friends and family anymore. That's just the, uh, the policy. I'm not, I'm not a gun for hire. I, I hung up that belt a while back, back at Christmas. Hey, no problem, David. Um, somebody keeps talking about this light switch, okay? If you don't know what to do, you need to call an electrician. <laughs> all right, stop, stop spamming the chat about your light switch, all right? Get an electrician. I can't diagnose your electrical problems from my laptop. I can barely use a laptop. <laughs> all right, let's get on with some comments here. Uh, pitching in for the oil paint on canvas. Oh, dear Lord. There we go. We got a super chat for two bucks. Well, you listen, I'll tell you what. Uh, how much would it cost to buy a canvas and some oil paints, Max? You think? Any idea? You ever been down that road of creativity before? Not there, no. No? All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you guys pitch in a hundred bucks, I'll buy the damn canvas and oil paints and we'll do the Bob Ross thing. And I don't care what it costs. I'll pay the balance. <laughs> Let's put the challenge out there uh, because, uh, you know, that's not really something. If you show me that you really, really want it by doing that, then I'll do it. But that's not my thing, but I'd be down for the, I'd be down to try. I'll just say that. All right. You kind of did it in the soundproofing video. A little bit, but that was just with green glue. With green glue. It doesn't really count. If you haven't seen that, you got to check it out. The soundproofing video we did recently. Uh, do you ever wear a desk mask? Of course. Yeah, basic dust mess. You don't need much. The secret to doing demolition on lath and plaster, if you're worried about the dust, is set up negative air. Put a fan in a window and, and create a negative air pressure in the room so it blows all the dust out. That'll help. But yeah, you don't want to wear a mask for sure. Um, the thing is, guys, for, for DIY home renovations, as a do-it-yourselfer, you're not going to be in the dirt every day of your life, okay? Most of the th issues that are related to construction, and hazards are repeated exposure over a long term. So if I'm not wearing a mask on a video because I'm talking, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal. The odd time. But I generally try to wear a mask whenever I'm around something like uh, like drywall dust nowadays. I generally wear a mask as a rule. Although the other day I broke my rule. Didn't have a mask. Job had to get done. Thoughts on butcher block countertop? I think they're great. I give up asking. I'm just blowing up the house. I just make sure nobody's in it. All right. Uh... <laughs> okay. So uh, one of our members, Damon, here is asking about the basement topic. Wants to know about the gap between the basement wall and the floor to keep the water out. Right? All right. So those are separate pores, Damien. And if there's a gap or a crack there, or not, it doesn't matter. It's a cold joint. If you have water outside your wall at that point, it's coming in. Hydraulic cement's not gonna solve your problem. Uh, interior French drain or an exterior foundation waterproofing system will work. 
Nothing else will last long term. You might get a couple of nice dry years out of it, but that'll be just enough to make you feel comfortable and want to finish your basement, and then the water's going to come in. So I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to work. Um, how do you level your patio door frame? Uh, generally, I use a level. Uh, the secret is to put the shims underneath the load-bearing part of the patio, which is the two outsides and the middle. And if you can level those three points along the bottom, then you're in business. All right. Do, 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 do. How are people liking the new channel? There's a good question. Second channel. Hey, guys. Have you been checking out the new channel, watching those old re redone videos? I'm curious to get some uh, feedback on that. We've, we're up in our game, too. We're releasing those once a week now, right? Every week. Max is a madman. He's an editing machine. So before you know it, a few months is going to go by, and we're going to be right into brand new content. That's going to be exciting. Uh, what do I think about alternative building materials like hempcrete and bamboo housing? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm all for anything that's affordable and effective. I don't have any bias one way or another. Uh, electric fireplace with mantle. Hmm. Yeah, that's something to look at. Um, <laughs> new sub here, just starting off. How are you guys? And this is Defiance Illusion. Oh, that's an interesting name. Dude, I am exhausted. <laughs> I've been working 12 to 14 hours a day on this project, trying to get it done before Christmas because, you know, nobody wants you working on their house at Christmas time, including myself. I don't want to be there either. Um, oh, somebody says they're still building the shed that I inspired. It looks like my attempts to copy a Bob Ross painting. <laughs> okay, well, so it's going to look like a shed, but <laughs> there's a new channel. Yeah, there's another channel. We call it uh, Reality Renovision. It's a little bit more like a TV style show, right? We're morphing it a little bit and getting more into the design and selection and prices. And uh, over the next few months, we're re-releasing a lot of our older Reality Renovision content. You know, we're updating all of our music because we have Epidemic Sound now. And so it should be a lot more enjoyable to watch. And Max is just kind of uh, tweaking it and fixing it all up and making it look pretty. And here we go. Oh, there you go. My wife is hard at work. She just threw up the link. If you want to check it out, you can subscribe to the new channel. We've got a video coming out tomorrow night, as a matter of fact. What video is coming out tomorrow night, Max? It's the original one, the Mother's Day Surprise. The Mother's <laughs> Day Surprise. That's awesome. My favorite second mother's in that video. In that video, you know, I'll just give you a quick hint. We started this channel three and a half years ago. We renovated Max's mom's bathroom in two days two or days. three? Uh, day and a half. I always feel like it was three. Day and a half, really? Yeah. Man, that's amazing. So we did this bathroom in a day and a half. We made like 18 videos out of it. And then when Max's mom came home from her, she was gone just for a few days out of town. Yeah. And then she came home and Max had the camera set up and got the reaction on her face and blew her away. It was the first time she'd ever had anything new fixed up in her life. And so um, it was such a touching story. We redid the bathroom again this year because <laughs> wanted to make two. it nicer. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, hey, what's with the black eye? Oh, man, just read through the thousands of comments. I answered it at least 10 times. Um, and unlike this channel, the second channel, every video is a different project, so. Right, that is true. Yeah, so the other, the other channel, the, every video is a different project. It really covers a, a wide swath of clients, too. Okay. Uh, wow. The chat here is just insane. It keeps on going and going and going. You know what? Enough of the tools. I'm going to open this up. Um, I'm going to answer technical questions. All right. Love these guys. Thank you, International Tool. Um, thank you, Crescent. Now, let's just get real. Let's get busy. Uh, no topic is off the shelf. All right. You can ask me personal questions. You can ask me business questions. Uh, if you're a contractor, you want to have tips about running your contracting business, I'm open to any question. I'll even discuss the Flat Earth Society people tonight. I don't care. I'm in a festive mood. If you've got a question, throw it at me. 
Now, the only way you can be guaranteed that I'm going to read it is if you throw it in a super chat, but I'll do my best to try to keep up regardless. What's the color name of the, black, of the back wall, Max? Chris wants to know. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you, which is a very strange name for a blue. But now we have no idea. Um, how long does primer need to dry before applying floor leveler? Woo, read the instructions on the package. Answer. All right. How do you tile over tile, walk in shower with tile? Okay. If you have a tile shower floor and you want to put a new tile shower floor on it and you want to transition from the old drain to the new, they actually sell drop in drain covers. So you can just tile up and around the hole and drop a new three inch or four inch drain cover on top. They sell them for like three bucks in the hardware store. It's designed to cover a pipe that's been cut flush with the concrete in the basement, but you can use that in your shower. Why not? Okay, hello from Australia. Cheers, Frank. All right. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Hi, lots of people saying hello. Isn't that nice? Um, after demoing, oh, I got to learn how to scroll. My Lord. That's the problem. I've got my, my mouse on this cute little Christmas paper and it's not working worth a darn. All right. Um, Okay, so you read that it says, doesn't say anything, just says add second coat within eight hours. Wow. So your primer requires two coats. There's your answer. When the second coat is dry enough to walk on, then you can pour the leveler, okay? You'll be fine. You must get a good deal for a product that's so inconvenient like that. What do you got? Oh, a mouse pad. Look, oh, oh. That's like driving a new car. I bet I need a new battery, too, because it's just still choppy as I'll get it. All right. Uh, how do you respond if a customer says you're too expensive, but you know the competing quote you're working against is cutting corners? Oh. Well, that's really simple. You, Graham, you need to just educate your customer on the cost of doing business. All right. Most people have no idea. What, kind of government taxes, the cost of running a business. They have no idea what it actually costs. And then you can say, this is what I'm expecting to take home as a living wage. If that's offensive to you, then I don't want to work for you. Because people that aren't willing to pay you what you're worth aren't going to pay the bill when you're done anyway. Trust me on that one. Been there too many times. All right. Uh-oh. <laughs> Brian sent us a couple bucks to top up his monthly so that we could get a happy meal. I'm gonna Brian, I'm throwing that in the mix. Now we're up to four bucks towards the <laughs> towards the, the doing the uh, the uh, oil paint thing. How do you adjust glowers, glass shower door to keep from rolling open? Install it level. That's all I can say. If it's rolling open, you've got it on an angle. Wow. That's not all shower doors are built the same. It's hard to tell. Oh, Max, my mouse is giving me trouble. All right, here we go. Scrolling down now. Oh, boy. I'm really feeling it's time for a battery. All right. Um, I have an old exhaust fan light combo in the middle of my kitchen that hardly vents. Yeah, the first thing you do is see if the vents clogged from the outside. Generally, they need regular maintenance. So... That's a good guess. If you aren't sure, it's possible that one of the fins has been broken off and birds are nesting inside the ducting. <laughs> That's more common than you think. Uh, get a Bluetooth mouse so they can work on practically... This is a Bluetooth mouse. It's just... I think the battery's almost dead. French drain or English channel? Not familiar with the English channel outside of my geography, but... Interesting. Wow, I scrolled way too far, way too fast. Fluffy white growth on the basement floor. Best way to get rid of it? Uh, use a broom. It's just uh, salt. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's not mold. It's just salt. It's because your basement floor does not have a waterproof vapor barrier system underneath your concrete. So the water is constantly migrating. 
And as that happens, it takes the salt out of the Portland cement that's made in the concrete and it's depositing it on top when it evaporates. That's all it is. Uh, how do you smooth out textured walls, ceilings? Wow. Yeah, over and over and over again is really the only answer to that one. Um, hey, you're welcome, Graham. Glad to help, man. Uh, all right. Thanks so much for the answer. Boop, doo, doo. What's the time, Max? Quarter to six. Wow. Uh, what are the first things to look for in a house when you're looking to buy? <whistles> your mechanical and your foundation. Don't get wrapped up in how pretty and flashy and the, the fresh cookies baking in the oven and all that jazz, all right? Head to the basement, do a foundation inspection and do a mechanical inspection, then check the roof. All the things that are not sexy, but will cost you the most money if they're not kept up to date. Most people make an emotional decision when they're buying a house and they miss out on the fact that it's old and probably a disaster. I know I did. <laughs> all right. Um, hey, real quick while I'm here, did you know that we have an Instagram page? Oh, this hat's driving me crazy. Here. There, that's better, eh? Man, I can breathe. Honestly, I don't know what they make these things out of, but it's... Oh, yeah. That's just nasty. All right. Enough of that. Um, we have an Instagram page, and it's almost 10,000 people. Do you know what happens at 10,000 people on our Instagram? We get the ability to swipe up. I don't know what that means, but my wife's very excited. And uh, if you're not on our Instagram, then you don't know what we're doing now. And you're missing out on all of the current information. Oh, man, I really looked funny with that hat on my head, didn't I? That's stupid. All right. How do you restore a 50-year-old bathtub? What's the best recast material method? I use a, this concept called glazing. Right? 50 year old tub is made of steel in most cases, and you can bring in a glazing guy and he'll prep it and spray it. Right? And it's a really, um, we'll call it like an oil based enamel type finish. Right? It's just really, really good. And that'll give you another 10 or 15 years. If you tub every day, maybe not quite 10 years, but in most cases, it lasts a lot longer than you ever expected it to. And it's only like 300 bucks. Don't try any of the DIY paint products that are on the market. They're all going to disappoint you. I know I've seen people do videos on it and they all act so surprised and happy with the result. They're all lying. It does not look good. All right. <laughs> if you don't get it professionally done, you will not be happy. All right. Can you install engineered hardwood flooring on top of ceramic tile floor? What? Engineered hardwood on top of ceramic tile. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, you could. You could use an adhesive. Why you'd want to, I have no idea. Unless your ceramic is on top of a concrete and you want to avoid the breaking out and the grinding down process to get a nice prep. Then maybe I can see your point. But be careful. You start adding another three quarter inch on top of a finished floor like that, you're going to have issues with all your doors and all your trim. And uh, it's a real... You're really heading in for a bit of a disaster, but it's possible. Um, boom, boom, boom. Watch all your videos. Okay, is it better to get a business loan or pay cash for all your equipment and truck? Wow. Giorgio, I'm going to give you this honest advice. If you're getting into business and you can and you can defer payments on all of the expenses that you have to get started to down the road, that is good business advice from the business community. However, if you're not completely confident that you're going to be successful in this venture and you can't afford to buy the truck and tools, might I suggest an alternative idea? This is not a business that for the faint of heart, I'm telling you right now. Uh, hey, if Jeff answered your question, give us a like. Give us a like anyway. <laughs> Why not? Not going to hurt. Um, oh, all my tiles down one row, perpendicular to floor joists, are cracked in a straight line. What do I think caused it? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> 
Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I gotta need a lot more information than that. But I'll tell you what I'm thinking that caused it. I'm thinking somebody installed plywood or cement backer board underneath that tile and they didn't stagger their joints. That's what I think caused it. Yep, somebody followed and put the joint right on a floor joist and with the expansion contraction in the house, it just snapped. You would not be surprised, I've seen it before. Uh, don't ever underestimate the value of installing your subfloor properly, right? Like, always stagger your joints, always overlap. Man, oh man, it's so important. Any tips on matching existing texture? Yes, retexture the entire wall surface that you're contacting. There's no such thing as patching, okay? So if you've got a 20 foot wall and you've interrupted two feet of it and you did a big repair, just do all 20 feet again because you'll be happy. If you try to just do that area and you blend, you're going to be disappointed and you're going to end up doing it again. So skip the disappointment phase and go straight to getting it done right. All right, you'll love it. Uh, what should I do if I want to be a tradesperson like you? Get married at 18, have four kids, be extremely broke, bust your ass working 80, 90 hours a week, put food on the table, have more people tell you that they're not happy than they are happy for a lot of years, then you learn what you're doing, then you go into business, and then you learn what it means like to have clients who decide and then they're done the job, they don't want to pay you. Yeah, that's what it means to be me. You know what? <laughs> Sorry for the rant, but if you want to be great at what you do, then just be great at what you do. If you're not happy with something, don't walk away from it. Best advice I can ever give you. Unless you're happy, you can never expect anybody else to be happy. And you're still going to have people who aren't happy. Managing expectations is brutally, brutally difficult nowadays. I have an old exhaust fan light combo in the middle of my kitchen at the vents. We already answered that question. Go check the clogging. Ooh, Berta. After the home was flooded by Harvey, water pressure almost gone and getting back black specks in from the faucet. Black specks in from the faucet. Wow. Yeah, Berta, I don't know. I would First thing I would do is I'd take a water sample, go down to the city, okay? They have free water testing, okay? Everybody has it. Get your water tested. Make sure it's safe to drink, first of all. All right? Um, but whenever you've got black specks in your water supply, there could be a lot of different reasons for that, but have your water tested first. Make sure you're safe, okay? Wow. How do you best estimate renovation costs prior to starting? What are good ways to speed up the process? You know what? The best thing you can do if you're going to estimate is in your mind, visualize everything you need to do. Write it all down, put a price on it, and then tell the client that everything done outside of what you've listed is going to be an additional cost, okay? You gotta be completely upfront. Now, if somebody else comes in with a competition quote and they've got it all itemized and they're cheaper, you might not get the job. But usually guys that are cheaper don't take the time to itemize all your costs. So save your files for your typical five by seven bathroom, save your file for a basic kitchen reno and, and, and make modifications to it. But if you're not gonna do detailed quotes, you're not gonna have a client who knows what to expect and you're not gonna be able to go after any extra money over and above once you get started and you'll be the one eating all the cost. The only other option, charge them double what you think it's gonna cost and see if you get any work. <laughs> and at least you can protect yourself uh yeah yeah folks i know the trades is a crazy place to be when you want to hire a tradesman it is an absolute crapshoot how would i go about transforming a small 1970s mobile home to a modern solution uh-oh 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 I hit a lot of buttons there. Oh, that's not going to be good. All right. I am totally. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm lost. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you want to update a mobile home, uh, got it. Use spray foam. Start from there. That's the best advice I have.
Okay. Oh, wow. I hope your couch is comfortable, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, boy. All right. Um, I'm going to have to skip down here. Jeff's ignoring all my comments. Grr. Yes, I am. I'm ignoring almost everything. I can barely see, first of all. And my mouse is acting up. Um, um, uh, here we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Batteries in your laptop bag. Thanks. Appreciate the super chat. That's how far back I am. I wish there was a time on the on these so I know how far behind I am. Justin. Okay, here we go. Hi, Jeff. What's the right way to insulate next to your wall from the outside? Insulate an exterior wall from the outs from the inside with embedded floor joists and brick walls. Heard the joist can rot if it's not done right. Whew. Wow. Justin, send me an email. Dude, you are part of the DIY crew. Um, and throw a picture of your project in there for me, okay? Because there is no one way to answer that. I need to know where you are geography-wise, the age of the home, and I need a picture. And then we can help you out with that, okay? Be happy to do it. What's the most important thing to get right when renovating the kitchen? <laughs> yeah. The most important thing to, re to get right when you're renovating your kitchen. Um... I would say it's more on the design side. It's the design side for the flow, how the kitchen functions, right? Is it going to be one person or two people? Are, there, are you setting up two different workstations? Are you going to be back to back bumping into people going nuts? You really, it's more about the flow because the party's always in the kitchen, right? So get the flow right and the rest of it, you know, it's just lipstick. Any way to add flashing to an existing ledger board on a deck? Oh, yeah. That's really tough. Doctor, if uh, if you have vinyl siding, you can remove the siding from the bottom. There's a special removal tool, and so you can add lots of flashing. But the flashing is really designed to, to divert water that gets behind the facade, right? So if you can't get behind the facade, more flashing is not going to be your solution. You can always use joist tape across the top if you have just too much moisture sitting there and that'll help protect it and give you lots more years of extended life. Uh, you can't transition from big crown to little crown without it looking Yankee. It's just gonna look Yankee, sorry. How to know the correct framing when adding shower niche? Yeah, you're gonna have to watch the video. Uh, okay, adding a tub to my bathroom and hit a tension line while jackhammering for a drain line. Is this a huge deal? Tension line, if you mean rebar, no, not a big deal. I'm not sure what the tension line is in reference to. Wow. Okay. Uh, I missed the tool discussion. Oh, well, hi, everyone. Hey, Nancy, here's the tool discussion in a minute. Oh. Jeff is ignoring Max. Batteries in the laptop bag. Oh, now I get it. The whole world is laughing at me, Max. Uh huh. It's been a long week. I'm a little tired and a little stupid. Let me get this straight. There are batteries for the mouse in my laptop bag. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I love being the butt of the joke. Man, that is just too funny. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, you got me, guys. The good news is, is we're up to six bucks for the Bob Ross Paint-a-thon. All right. Best laser level without breaking the bank. Uh, yeah, get that really basic. Um, um, DeWalt makes one, and the other company that I bought, what the heck is the name of that company? I can't remember. My brain's not working. Listen, you can get a good laser level for 60 bucks, okay? It's going to be one line, though. It's going to tell you when things are level. And if you're smart, you can buy a, uh, a tripod 
because the quarter inch thread on it is standard for those laser levels and then you can raise it and lower it and make sure everything's perfect. Uh, we're not laughing at you, just near you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dame. Appreciate it. Um, uh, I spread the battery comment. I finally got to it. Yeah, I know. It's Veros life. I know. I'm, I'm, I am that guy. Installed carpeting in all my bathroom. It looks really good. <laughs> For now. <laughs> wow. Oh. So the tool talk is really simple. Go to International Tool. We're going to put the link in the video description after the video uploads tonight. All right, so you can refer to this by tomorrow, guys. Hopefully, the information will be on our website by tomorrow as well. This is all coming together really quickly. But because it's Christmas, we wanted to get this out there sooner than later. They're having some deals and sales, and we don't want you to miss out on a chance to save some money. Because, uh, you know, everybody likes to save a little bit of money. Um, where's the email for the DIY crew to ask a question? Good point, Chris. Um, Michelle, please remind me <laughs> when I get home, we are going to have to do an update. You want to go to the home page and check the community postings. Okay. The community posts for members. We're going to have all the information in there for how you can contact us and, and get your questions answered. Um, so that'll be cool. We'll get that updated. Uh, we try to do that every month, but sometimes it just, you know, life takes over. I, uh, Anthony's saying, I find the vertical line on the laser level gets used more than the horizontal line. Oh, well, I guess it all depends what you're doing. But that is quite possible. Listen, guys, it's 6 o'clock. Um, I haven't had dinner. I had a 14-hour day today. Uh, I love you all very much, but I'm going to have to be going soon. Don't push that button yet, Max. I do want to just say it's been a hell of a year. Like, honestly... We're blown away. Uh, the response, we had never had any idea that so many people would um, respond as well as you have for our long format construction video tutorials. Um, we're in awe because we, we don't just have a, a lot of people watching. We have the best people watching our channel. Like, it's just been a blast. Uh, when we first started out, you had to have a real thick skin to be on YouTube. But man, every day now I get up in the morning and I race to the comment section and it is just so easy, right? This is nothing but love and questions and people saying thanks for helping. And we love doing it, you know, helping is our thing. I am so excited about the next couple of years coming up because we've got some big plans and I can't share them with you yet because they're not quite there. But I do have a very important breakfast meeting on Sunday that's moving us towards that direction. And I have a phone meeting tomorrow morning about something that's really exciting. Again, I can't share it, but know this. We're working real hard behind the scenes to develop a new YouTube experience, right? Where we're not just here to give you advice, but we want to be here to help make life more affordable and help you make good decisions. And we want to be more available to you. So <laughs> um, thank you so much for an awesome year. The growth has been fantastic. The best we can figure um, in about another 45 minutes to an hour, we're going to surpass the low subscriber count and we will be officially the largest renovation channel in the world. Seems kind of odd. I don't know how that happened, but it did. And uh, cheers to that. Get a TV show. You know, I, maybe one of these days, right? I'm hoping. Down in Florida, I'm going to do lots of walking on the beach and try to go to yoga to burn this bad boy off. Maybe TV will like me more than who knows. But to be honest with you, um, we're just loving our time on YouTube and this whole community. And I don't know, I would never want to lose that. So, you know, I guess the only way we can do a TV show, Max, is to produce our own. Reality Brandon. I know. <laughs> it's, it's a small start, but hey. If you want to see us in a TV show, then go to our Reality Renovision. Support us there, all right? It's a groundswell opportunity, all right? Lift us up and help us be able to afford to put the crew together to do a really good job. That kind of content is so much more labor intensive and difficult to film. And am I allowed to share anything about what happened to you recently? Sure. Yeah. Skim it yeah. a little bit, not too much detail. All right, sure. just for fans of the channel, you all love Max. Max is awesome, he does a great job. He had an accident a few weeks ago. 
And it's funny, you know, it's like, out of all the times they've been yelling at me on my channel to use my safety gear, Max has an accident just walking through the shopping center and he probably just, if sheer exhaustion, right? He blacked out for just a second. Unfortunately, he did it while he was falling backwards and he dislocated his shoulders. And so you know what happens, right? As soon as you have in a moment like that, the, the world gets, oh my God, you know, let's take his driver's license. And so Max has been healing and trying to get better and, and it's been an absolute interesting time. We've had to bring in a, a, another cameraman to give us a hand getting the footage on our project. And so quick shout out for Chris. Thanks for jumping in and helping us out. Uh, looks like Max is going to be able to get back in the swing of things soon. Uh, my son is going to be his his boy. He's going to run around and carry all of his equipment and make sure he doesn't do any heavy lifting. And But we need his, we need his brain back on set, right? Anyway, so it's been a hell of a year. Um, it wasn't that long ago, you know, Max had his arm mauled by his dog when his, when his dog was feeling sick. Oh, my God. Like the evil we had a tornado this year. <laughs> yeah. um, I got stung by a hornet, and I'm, my face swelled up like hitch. You know that? Oh, my God. One hell of a year. But uh, through it all, you guys have been there and supporting us, and we just want to say thanks. Have a Merry Christmas. Uh, make sure you take time to hug your babies and uh, enjoy your family this season. And uh, if you're not into Christmas, that's cool. Cheers. Enjoy your holiday season. Hope 2020 is going to be an amazing year for all of you. And all I know is that we're going to do our darndest to help make sure that next year is the most amazing year ever. So that's it from me. Cheers. Peace out. Jeff's gone. Good night. Max is going to push a button now. And I'm probably going to be on the air for a few more seconds. But that's okay. <laughs> maybe next week we'll have something on the screen that'll just eat some more time I don't know but that's not happening tonight because I use a hammer for a living anyway bye bye good to see all you guys in the chat tonight thanks Michelle for all your help